Let us worship God. Last Sunday, I asked you, where is the Great Commission found in the New Testament? Matthew. Matthew? At the beginning? The end. The very end of Matthew. I'm glad you know that, where that is. Do you know what Jesus said right before he gave us the Great Commission? He said, all authority has been given to me on, in heaven and on earth. Now, is that an audacious claim or what? But it is true. And that's why Jesus had the authority to tell us to do what he tells us to do. And we're talking about authority today. His authority. And it's by his authority that we have been challenged to do these things. Let's say the Great Commission together. Then Jesus came to them and said, All authority in heaven and on earth Therefore, go and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, teaching them to obey everything I have commanded you. And be surely I am with you always, to the very end of the age. Morning, y'all. Morning. Stand your people, sitting number 32. Praise my soul, the King of Heaven, all verses.
praise the Lord. And we are very, very grateful for that privilege. We thank you for it. In Jesus' name, amen. Did you see what was in the scriptures today? What we're highlighting, if 
you were to have a highlighter or a circle, it would be the word authority. Keep your antenna up for that as we address it in message time in just a little while. God uh, tells us to pray, to pray without ceasing. Are we obeying Him on that? Not just today, but, but every day. It's a good thing for us to do. So let us bow our heads and go to the Lord now in prayer. Our dear Heavenly Father, every moment of every day, we have good reason to pause, to praise you, to praise you to the highest, to praise you in every situation, to praise you for every blessing, because you're so good to us, Lord, and you are the God of this universe. You are in control. You are so in control that you have granted us freedom to have a measure of control within your creation. Thank you for trusting us with that. And thank you when we are able to participate with you in the created order, in a good way, a helpful way, a fulfilling way. For many times, Lord, we want to create our own world. We want to create our own moral order built around us and our needs, our interests, our wants. And we, we do that, Lord, we find out that life just collapses in on itself into meaninglessness. But we would listen at our best to the Lord Jesus when he tells us to lose our lives in others, and in that way we'll find it. To not reach for self, but to reach and serve others. May it be that we can be reminded of that this day as we are listening to the one who came to us, who taught us, who blessed us, who informed us, and who kindly told us what to do. So Father, we're here today to claim and proclaim the Lordship of Jesus Christ. And just as news about him spread quickly over the whole region of Galilee, may it be that the news about Jesus spreads from us in this place, in our community, to those who are in our region, to those who are missing out on the kingdom of God, sitting on the sidelines, uh, not aware of just how much you love them through your Son and through us. Please do make us instruments of your peace and love and kindness and caring and help us to do that, we pray, in Jesus' name. Amen. If I could stand your name, please sing number 178. He is Lord of all verse. Hey, Larry, could you enhance the lyrics just so I can see how the lyrics have been put on here? Because there's a lot of road maps on here. Just make sure I'm still on the edge right here. We do like that, right? We do like that. Tell me I already know what I'm saying.
which is important to remember that our church has a history of being very generous, of giving overall for even a small congregation. And as we bring these kind of offerings today, we are blessed that we are able to do these things. God has blessed this church in many ways and blessed most of us with those things where we're able to do these. May we pray. Lord, we're so thankful. We're thankful for the blessings that you give us. We're thankful for the gift of your Son, Jesus Christ. And we're thankful so much for our church because we know that this church has a long history of being generous and kind and loving and giving to many different places. We thank you for each thing that you give us. We ask that the tithes and offerings that we bring today be used to further some of these missions as we go about trying to help others throughout the world. We know that there are many in this world that are so in need of not just physical things, but spiritual needs also. And we ask God that you be with those people and bless them, that they may come to know you in a, in a much closer way. We thank you for this day. We thank you for the people of this church. We thank you for the people of our community. Be with us as we go through this time. Amen.
He wanted to define himself. He wanted to reveal himself at the right time and the right place as to who he is. And yes, he is the Holy One of God, but there's a time and a place for everything. And Jesus looks at this guy and he says to the impure spirit, come out of him. And it happens. Right there. Right there. Amazing. He comes out with a shriek. And everybody else is wide-eyed and standing around and saying, what is this? What, what are they amazed about? This guy speaks with such authority. It's such an authority that even the demons listen to him. Wow. We are impressed. That got their attention. Later, Jesus was asked where his authority came from. Where, where does Jesus' authority come from? Well, it had a positive or negative impact on everybody he met. But Jesus' authority came from his relationship with God the Father. First and foremost, his relationship with God the Father. As we already know, the, the teachers of the law in that day always had to tie their teachings to, uh, you know, this saying. You've heard this saying, and that's why this is true. Or, Rabbi so-and-so says such-and-such, and that's why it is true. But Jesus doesn't do that. He says, I say to you. You hear the difference? Rabbi so-and-so says, blah, blah, blah. No, Jesus said, I say to you. How audacious, but how authoritative. Um, it was because of his relationship to the Father that he could talk like that. He and the Father are very much on the same page. Dr. Phil Major said that uh, when his second daughter, Megan, was born, he took her older sister, Jamie, to the nursery at the hospital there to see her little sister. And while they were there, uh, Jamie saw that there was uh, some twins that had been born there. And, and that just fascinated her, that there were two babies who looked exactly alike, who were born on the same day to the same parents. And her little mind was just trying to comprehend that. Major said that on the ride home from the hospital, suddenly uh, Jamie turned to him and asked, Dad, are God and Jesus twins? And Major says, well, out of the mouths of babes. Yeah, they're identical, aren't they? Identical. That's why Jesus could say, you've seen me, you've seen the Father. The Father and I are one. Perfectly identical. And that's where Jesus' authority comes from. His relationship to the Father and his commitment to serve the needs of people. That's where his authority is rooted. It didn't make any difference who they were. didn't make any difference where they came from, how much money they had, or anything like that. Jesus is willing to help somebody in need, like this guy. As far as we know, he's a nobody. He's, he might be an outcast. He might be somebody who's just a troubled soul that most people want to stay away from. And the folks that day were so greatly impressed that Jesus was willing to help somebody like this. And he did it time and time again. And if Jesus, as they looked on him, could make a difference in this guy's life, well, maybe, maybe he can make a difference in my life too. That's what they ought to conclude, because it's true. Dr. Edward Rosenau, formerly of the Mayo Clinic in Rochester, Minnesota, uh, told about the experience that caused him to enter the medical profession and to become a doctor. He said that when he was a boy uh, living in Minnesota, uh, one time his brother got deathly ill. I mean, his parents thought that his brother might even die. And they called the doctor, and the doctor came, and Rose now said when he, he studied his parents' faces, they were so anguished. They were so anguished as the, and anxious and anguished as the, the doctor was, was examining the boy. And he said, 
All of a sudden, the doctor turned to his parents with a smile and said, You can relax, folks. Your boy's going to be all right. And he said, The look on their faces was just transformed into one of great relief and joy. And Rose now says, It was there and then that I decided that I wanted to do that too. I wanted to light people's faces up. So he became a doctor. Jesus could light people's faces up. He could heal them. He could give them hope. And he still gives hope to people today. Even you and you and me. Wonderful. Dr. Diane Kump is a pediatric uh, oncologist and she specializes in treating children who are suffering from cancer. And through her work of treating children who are suffering with cancer, she went from being an agnostic, who wasn't very sure about this God stuff, to being a believer in Jesus Christ. Her favorite quote from one of her former patients was, for the Christian, the big C is not cancer. The big C is Christ. Jesus is the big C, authority, who genuinely cares about people in distress. In distress. And Jesus' authority also came from his willingness to do whatever it takes to help people. Don't you see that in Christ? He gave his all toward this thing he was trying to do to bring in the kingdom of God. And that's what the cross is all about. The willingness to do what it takes. During World War II, there was a platoon of American soldiers who needed to cross what they knew was a minefield. And they had no way of detecting the mines. And so the commander of that platoon decided that what they would do was one man would walk across the field and everyone else would follow in his footsteps if he made it. If he didn't make it and he set off a mine, then somebody else had to walk through the field up to that point and then take a different route. That's all they could do. So everybody wanted to go, oh my gosh, who is going first? You know who went first? The commander. He went first. He walked carefully across that field, and he made it. And so all the other men were able to cross the field as well. What do you think the men in that platoon thought about their leader after that? Did they respect him? Did they listen to him? Oh, my. They followed him. Because they knew that he was willing to do whatever it took for their benefit, for their safety, for their good. Why should people follow us if they don't think we're committed to the cause? If they don't think we're willing to do whatever it takes to bring the kingdom of God in? They won't listen to anybody who's giving less than their all. Jesus was definitely one to give his all. You know, there's another reason to follow Jesus' authority today, you know, is because he has had this continuing influence over 2,000 years of human history. Because of his death and resurrection and his teachings, he has been so powerfully influential in this world on many levels and many ways. Rodney Stark, who is a sociologist at, at the University of Washington, uh, describes how in ancient times in Rome, whenever a plague hit, uh, in the time of the Christian era, they observed that not as many Christian people died as did regular other people who were members of the Roman Empire. And you know what that was? While the average Roman citizen would have taken a sick person and thrown him out of the house, thrown him into the street so that they wouldn't get the plague, the Christians didn't do that. They kept the person in the house. They tended to that person. And so that's why a whole lot more Christians survived the plague 
than did the regular Roman citizens. Why did Christians not fear death? Because their leader taught them that he is the resurrection and the life. And therefore, death had no hold over them. And that's why they did what they did. One of the sources of Jesus' authority is his influence over people of all times and places since he has been around. You know, Leonardo da Vinci painted a very famous painting called The Last Supper. It was painted over 500 years ago. You have a painting? You're familiar with this painting? Well, it's considered one of the classic pieces of, uh, of art in, in the world. And according to Michael Gell, look at this painting. It contains a circular motif in a lot of places. Everything on the table is round, such as the bread and the plates. The disciples are arranged in a half circle on each side of Jesus. This is a distinct purpose behind the Vinci's use of a circular theme, writes Gell. Like a stone tossed into a spilt pond of eternity, Leonardo conveys Christ's influence, <coughs> rippling out to change human destiny forever. That's authority. When your words and actions send out ripples of influence everywhere. There was an anonymous author who made this observation. You know, Socrates taught for 40 years, Plato for 50 years, Aristotle for 40 years, Jesus for only three years. And yet the influence of Christ three-year ministry infinitely transcends the 130 years of teaching from these men who were among the greatest philosophers of all antiquity. That's true, isn't it? And Jesus painted no pictures, and yet some of the finest paintings of Raphael, Michelangelo, and Leonardo da Vinci received their inspiration from him. Jesus wrote no poetry, but Dante, Milton, and scores of the world's greatest poets were inspired by him. Jesus composed no music, and still Haydn and Handel and Beethoven and Bach and Mendelssohn reached their highest perfection of melodies in the hymns, the symphonies, the oratorios they composed to his praise. Amazing, isn't it? Every sphere of human life this day has been influenced by the carpenter from Nazareth. Amazing. But it's all because of his authority. The dentist that I went to in Danville was a woman, a very experienced and capable woman who knew dentistry worked very, very well. Uh, she was telling us that one time she and her husband went on a mission trip to a South American country, and she was doing a dental practice there for people who really needed it. But she found out one thing. When she would go to tell the men of that land and culture what to do, they didn't listen to her because she was a woman. And so she simply told her husband, who was a pharmacist and not a dentist, she told him what to tell them. And so he didn't know dentistry, he just repeated whatever she said, and they listened to him because they thought a man has authority. Now, doesn't that strike you as silly and stupid? Uh, I think it is. Not to listen to an authority, whether it be a, a man or a woman who's a physician or an attorney or an auto mechanic or a police officer or a nurse or a computer technician or a plumber, whatever. It's good to listen to people who know what they are talking about. Does Jesus know what he's talking about? <clears throat> yeah, she, he sure does, because of where he came from and who he knows, the Heavenly Father, 
And how he goes about doing things, I, I believe this man knows what he is talking about. So if you believe that Jesus knows what he's talking about, and he is an authority, why aren't you doing the things he tells you to do? Now, most of us, what we want to do, we want to pick and choose. So, uh, yeah, I'll, I'll do that, but I'm not comfortable doing this. Is that how this, this works? <laughs> uh, no. If Jesus tells us to do something, it's right, it's good, and we ought to be doing it. All authority has been given to him in heaven and on earth. We had better pay attention. Nobody who has ever lived had the authority that Jesus had. And that's why his highest title is what? King of kings and Lord of lords. No other king has more authority than him. No other lord has authority than he does. No president politician of anybody else has more authority than this one who is sent from God. Now someday we're going to see him face to face and it's going to be obvious to everybody. Every knee shall bow, every tongue confess that Jesus Christ is Lord. Okay, but why wait until then to know it's true? It's true now. You and I need to do something about it right now. Don't. Young yeah, Stanish at Eagles, scene number 161, Brown and Newman Crowns, all verses.
now we go in the name of the one who was crowned with a crown of thorns. But we are here today to crown him with many crowns. The love, peace, and joy that comes to us in the Lord Jesus Christ. How blessed we are to go under his authority this day. Amen. Amen. 